It's the last stand. And here is your host, Brian Custer. That's right. It is the last stand. We bring you the biggest names in the sport. Our guest today is a two-time super middleweight champion of the world. He's none other than David Benavidez. David, how are you, man? Once again, welcome back to The Last Stand. I'm doing great, man. You know, thank you for again for having me on. But um, everything has been tremendous up to this point. You know, I'm very excited, very happy, very motivated. You know, I work extremely hard for this fight. So I feel like the work has been done already. You know, everything has been done. I feel no pressure at all. Everybody keeps asking me, do you feel pressure? Do you feel pressure? Especially fighting in your hometown. And I, I don't at all. I feel ready. You know, it's just time to go, you know, that Saturday and put an amazing performance on. So you take on, you took on Kyron Davis instead of Jose Uzcategui, who, you know, comes up positive for EPL, which is a PED, taking off the car. What was your thoughts about that? Because it was so hyped about two former champions, two big time punchers. And then you find up he pops dirty. I mean, it, it, it was very unfortunate, bro. But honestly, he was really, truly trying to be sneaky about it because we had got drug tested like four times before that. And for him, you know, um, it's just very like some dirty stuff, you know, for him trying to, I mean, EPO is that too, that makes sure that you don't gas out and you recover faster. But with all that being said, I don't feel like that would have saved him anyways. I feel like I was a superior fighter, superior punching power, and I got, you know, better combinations. So I feel like I would have ended him anyways. So, you know, last time you were here in Phoenix and fought here in your hometown like six years ago, it was your brother who was like the main event guy. Now, you're the main event guy. How is how did that dynamic changed in the Benavides household? Whereas you looked up to him, he's fought all the, he was fighting all these great fights, the Terrence Crawfords of the world, and now you're the man in the Benavides house. You know, I was just waiting for me for my moment to come. You know, I mean, I feel like timing. You know, time is the best thing ever. You know, I always knew my time was going to come, but I didn't know when it was going to come. And you know, my brother had that tremendous fight with Terrence Crawford, but I feel like that also opened the doors for me too because. Everybody's interested in the Benavides name. So I just took over from there too. You know, I kept doing what I was doing, having great fights. And, and now I feel like I'm excited because, you know, the boxing world has both Benavides back in the mix, you know, and Phoenix, Arizona has two sons to look up to on, you know what I mean? So I'm very motivated to have, keep having fights here back in Phoenix, Arizona, because this is our home. And, you know, the boxing fans here are crazy, man. And they show a lot of support, so. what did you think of the Canelo plant? It was a great fight. You know, I feel like, it, it went down exactly how I thought it was going to happen. You know, Caleb Pant, great uh, defensive fighter. He uh, throws some great counter uh, punches, but he doesn't have that power. You know, and I feel like to beat Canelo or, or compete with him, you need that power to hold your own ground or to keep him off of you. You know, and, and Caleb Plant, he just didn't have that. But hats off to Caleb Plant, too. He did good. You know, he did good. He just got caught in the last round. You know, it, it gave you an opportunity really to scout both guys because you've been linked with both guys. Uh, many believe Canelo is unbeatable right now. What did you see? Well, that's why the people that say that they wouldn't fight want to fight Canelo. That's why nobody would ever remember their names. You know, I'm here to do the stuff that people say I can't do. Obviously, when a guy's on a run like this, you know, it's very, it's very hard to go against a guy like that because, you know, I feel like he's in the prime of his career. But this is why I became a boxer in the first place. I already did a lot of things that people said I wasn't going to do. And I, I, I like to continue having that happen. And when you watched him fight, was there different things you saw out of him? You were like, man, I, I could have done this or this against him. Yeah, obviously, yeah. The, um, you look at me and Caleb Plant, we're two different fighters. Two different fighters. But I feel like the speed is there. But my shots have way more snap on them. You know, I'm a bigger guy. It's crazy because Caleb Plant made Canelo look small. And I make Caleb Plant look small. You know what I mean? So um, I'm a stronger fighter, faster fighter. And... Uh, I'm really hungry. You know, I'm in a great space, a great space uh, moment in my life right now, mentally and physically at the best uh, condition I've ever been in. And, you know, this is, these are the big challenges I want. And so talk to me about Caleb. When you watched Caleb fight, what did you see? Did you say how a Caleb, David Benavidez fight would play out? I mean, he would, he would get knocked out in both situations with Canelo and with David Benavidez, you know. Um, that's still a fight I would love to make happen, belt or no belt. I still need to make that fight happen. But with Caleb Plant, I feel like he's a first half fighter, you know, and me, I'm a second half fighter too, like Canelo. You know, you see him on my fights, I land at 50 or right at 49% of my power shots. And that's crazy for a power shot or a power puncher like that. So I feel like the deeper in the waters that the fight goes, the better I get. And that's, uh, I feel like some people, some fighters that 
that's their peak is in the beginning. And you know, so whatever fighter, that's why I feel comfortable and I'm, I feel motivated to fight whatever fighter it is because I know my condition is outstanding. At any time, David, did you have a feeling like, you know, Canelo has, out of all the belts he has, he has a WBC belt. That's my belt. It's not like I lost that belt in the ring. I deserve a chance to get my belt back. Definitely, I definitely feel like that, but like uh, damage has been done already. I'm the one who put myself in the situation, but I'm still the number one contender. So it's gonna happen sooner or later. You know, I'm still knocking on the door. My last fight was actually WBC title eliminator. This was gonna be another w WBC title eliminator. So, I mean, I feel like I'm number one contender and the people are asking for this fight. So all I gotta do is in here go look good, be the, the, the same fighter I've been my whole career. And I feel like the opportunity is gonna come soon. You know, Jamal Charlo was ringside. He was uh, watching the fight. Um, tell us why a Benavidez Canelo fight is more appealing than a Canelo Charlo fight. Well, you know, First things first is because I'm I'm the number one contender in super middleweight. I've been at super middleweight my whole career. Charlo has never had a fight at super middleweight. You know, he's just trying to skip the line and get go straight to the, uh, the paycheck, you know. But that's why I've said time and time again, I don't mind fighting Charlo. You know, I feel like that would be a great situation to have an interim belt. You know what I mean? It, it makes sense on both sides. But I feel like Charlo, he's not sure about himself, you know. If I was such an easy fighter, like he said I was, he was gonna knock me out, break my neck, like how he said he was, he would have been took me out. Cause I'm a good, I'm a good resume. If I get beat, if anybody beats me, I'm a good resume on anybody's resume. You know what I mean? So I feel like I told them, I called Luis Acubas, I told tell him, tell Al Heyman, we can make this an IBF or a WBC title eliminator or a, or a WBC interim title. And then the winner takes Canelo. Mm -hmm. I feel like that's, it's the fairest thing to do. You know, Charlo, he's never fought at 168. So how is he gonna skip the line and go fight Canelo, his first fight at 168? The one thing I love about you is how you've matured. Your father now, got a son, is a little bit old. How has being a father changed you as a man and as a fighter? It's changed me a lot, you know, this past uh, year and a half, you know, just seeing my son. Um, and now just being there, you know, just wanting to be a great father for my son. And um, every time I'm training and I get tired, I'm tired of running. I think, you know what, my son is the one watching me, you know, because my son, he watches my fights all day. You know, at the media workout yesterday, he was trying to throw, do a little bit of shadow boxing too. So just having him um, watching me, I want to be as best of a motivation and a role model for him. And um, honestly, it's, I'm, I've already did what I did in my, for myself. Now everything is for my son, for my here's, son and my, and my family. Here's the scary thing to me about David Benavides. He's just 24. And I would say you're not even haven't even gotten your man strength yet. It, is David Benavides even near his prime yet? I, don't, I feel like I don't know. I don't think I am, bro. To be honest with you, I feel like my man strength is coming up. I know it's getting here because I felt I was hurting a lot of sparring partners, and um, I feel it. You know, I feel it. My body's getting uh, it's getting different. It's getting more muscle, and so I definitely feel it. But I don't feel. I think you start peaking in your prime like 27, 28. You know what I mean? So that's definitely a scary thing for all my opponents. But I think also, too, what is helping me hit my peak, too, is the training I've put in for this. And I work every single day. You know, I only take two weeks off from my fight and then I go back into training. You know what I mean? So the strength and conditioning training I've been doing since I was 15 years old, you know, I've, I've still done it. You know, everything has been the same. That's why I'm so strong. And that's why my condition is so good, because I've been working like an animal since I was 15 years old. And I look to continue that. You, you are growing, getting older. How long do you see yourself at 168? Um, well, I mean, this morning after a run, I was at 171. So there's only three pounds left to the weigh-in. So, I mean, I have my energy good. Everything is good. So I'm trying to just take it fight by fight. You know what I mean? Uh, but I feel like with the diet I've had and everything I've been doing, I feel like I could do another two years. Um, Jake Paul is back in December fighting its Tommy Fury, right? What do you think about these social influencers who have gotten into boxing and some of them are making millions? Yeah, I feel like the reason he's making millions is because his um, his fan base. You know, you got to respect somebody, too, that that puts in the time and the work in a training camp. You know, a lot of people when they have money like this. A lot of them just party and drink and go to the club. And he's actually making, you know, trying to make a name for himself. Obviously, he's not at the level that the world champions and all these, even if he wants to fight Canelo or anybody, I mean, if he takes it as disrespect, you know, so be it. But, you know, some guys that I know, myself, my brother, everybody, I've been boxing since I was three years old. I've been boxing for 21 years. And that's, there's certain situations that you go through when you box for so long. 
I've seen it all in there, you know what I mean? And I know Jake Paul, I don't know how long he's been boxing, but he's working hard. I'll give, I'll, I'll, I don't take nothing away from him, but you know, this is, this is a different level. You know, this is definitely a different level, but I'm saying he's done a, he's done a good job with his fan base, everything he's done. And that's why I feel like if you could sell 1.2 million in pay-per-view, then you know, nothing should be taken away from you. That's not easy. Um, you, you know, for everybody who comes on the show, we allow people to submit questions through social media and we got a number of them for you. So we'll get right to them. Uh, first one from David on Twitter. He says, uh, David, are you vaccinated? You know, I'm not vaccinated because when I got COVID, they said my doctor advised me to get vaccinated after the fight because you can't get vaccinated the first three months after COVID. Uh, this other one from Twitter, it asks. That, let me see. That was that was that was Charlo under a fake name. He <laughs> <laughs> uh, did say something about you being vaccinated. Uh, this one from Twitter it says, how do you feel about being stripped of the WBC belt for a failed drug test, not PED? out of competition compared to Valdez, who keeps his belt, and he fails a drug test in competition. I mean, it is what it is. I don't even have to say nothing about that. I feel like if you're going to have these rules in place, you can't just pick and choose who you're going to punish from and who you're not. And especially for me, I mean, I'm not going to say, I shouldn't have been doing that stuff anyway, but I wasn't even in, I didn't have a fight coming up. This dude was in a fight in two weeks, but I have nothing against him or, or Valdez. You know, I've known him too, but. I mean, you can't be lenient on whoever you want to be lenient against. You have to, if you put these rules in play, everybody has to face the same punishment. Uh, next one from Twitter asks, David, why don't you get special treatment from the WBC? I don't know. I want to ask him that too. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. I'd, um, it is what it is. I don't have anything against the WBC, IBF, or none of them. I feel like I'm very just grateful for just to being, I've uh, had the position of being a WBC world champion and I mean, I feel that's special treatment enough for me. I don't need no special treatment. Uh, Lewis from Twitter asks, being uh, being a real champion at such a young age, do you think you're underrated? Um, No, I don't feel like I'm underrated. I feel like the people know, know you know what I mean? And uh, I still, um, I feel like it, when people, they give you too much praise, you hype yourself up and your head gets kind of big. And I kind of want to remain at this level right now because I'm still motivated and I still have a lot to accomplish in my life. I want to be a multiple, multiple uh, world champion. You know what I mean? And just being two world champions is nothing compared to what I want to be. Um, so, I mean, I feel like I'm I'm underrated, but when I get in the fights with these fighters, you know, they, they find out a whole, that I'm, you know, that I am who I am for a reason. Uh, Ari asked from Twitter, uh, how long do you plan to stay at 168? And are you going to be in that new boxing video game by eSports? I'm not. I uh, hope so. I, I didn't get invited to do that, but I hope, you know, hopefully they invite me and they make my character because I'm, I'm, a, I'm a big boxing fan in fight nights. I love those games. So hopefully. And uh, like I said, man, I'm maybe another two years. I mean, the, every time I make weight, I'm extremely dedicated to the diet. But I feel like that's a good thing, too, because it's teach, being dedicated to the diet doesn't teach me you just have to be dedicated to the food. You have to be dedicated to the whole training routine, the training camp. So it, it goes hand in hand with making me who I am today. All right, David Benavides, you know the drill. Uh, time for the last segment of this show. We call it the last stand. I'm going to ask you a series of questions. Just give me the first thing that comes to your mind. All right, you ready? What fight, in your opinion, is more realistic? Benavides Canelo, Benavides Charlo, Benavides Plant? Benavides Canelo. No. Mm. Um, do you see David Benavides? as champion again or as the undisputed champion at 168? Undisputed champion at 168. Biggest misconception about David Benavides? Undisciplined, that he's undisciplined. First thing that comes to your mind when I say Jermall Charlo? Chicken. <laughs> yeah, I can say something else, but I want to be professional. <laughs> and last but not least, what's your goal, ultimate goal in this sport? Um, it's more than one word, but, you know, obviously my goal is to be the best of my generation. You know, I feel like 2000s was De La Hoya, 2010s was Mayweather. Right now it's Canelo, but I feel like I want to get my name in there too. You know, from 2020 to... 2030s, I want to be like solidify myself as one of the best of this generation. Tell you what, folks, that's what we do. We bring you the biggest names in the sport. And at 168, one of the biggest, this man right here, David Benavides, my brother. Always appreciate it. Thanks for watching, everybody. We'll see you again next week.